I think it's important to know that kapa is the Hawaiian word for that substance made out of fiber, plant fiber usually, that is used throughout the tropical zone in many other parts of the world. So that in Samoa, it's Siapo, in Tonga, it's Tafa, in Hawaii, it's Kapa. Places that didn't have cotton traditions, linens, or woven things, ended up somehow discovering that certain tree barks could be beaten and worked out to be able to make things you could cover yourself with. When the Hawaiians developed this art form after they settled in Hawaii and lost contact with the Central Polynesia, they developed a very high, high state of the art. When Polynesians settled the Hawaiian archipelago sometime between 300 and 800 AD, they brought plants that were essential to their way of life. One of the plants they brought was the wauke, Brasenetia papyrifera, or paper mulberry, the plant that was vital to the practice of making kapa. One Hawaiian legend tells us that the goddess Hina could not dry her kapa because the sun traveled too quickly across the sky. Her son Maui stood atop Haleakala, lassoed the sun and forced it to travel more slowly. Thus, both time and the rhythm of the day as we know it are associated with the cycle of kapa making. Kapa in Hawaiian culture was used as clothing. It's beaten, so all the clothing was essentially a rectangle. So the women would wear a wraparound skirt called a pa'u. The men would wear a loincloth and called it a malo. There was a, uh, like a cloak, shoulder covering that was called a kihe or kikepa. It was also uh, the blankets. It was also um, used ceremonially in the temple dressings. It was used on the ki'i or the, the statues when it was that God's time that he was, you know, he ruled or he was awake. It was used extensively in burials. They had different ways of preparing bodies to be buried and so many of them that they found were wrapped in, in like black kappa. Uh, so it was, you know, to take the, the cotton uh, you know, logo. It was the fabric of our lives. Several things distinguish Hawaiian kapa from other Pacific Island kapa. Finished pieces were felted together and appear seamless. The color palette used in decorating was extensive and the kapa designs more intricate than those of other island groups. But one of the most unique and beautiful features of Hawaiian kapa is watermarking. If you see a piece of kapa, just look at it, you know, just flat. You don't see that watermark. But if you lift it up to the light, you see this wonderful surprise. And the watermarks differed, as I understand it, from family to family or from couple maker to couple maker. That watermarking there, to me, is the kauna of the kapa. It is not a hidden meaning. It's that underlying thing, which is very Hawaiian as well. <gasps> Ooh. Why don't you just leave it like that? Just leave it like that. Here's the, here's the thread right here. Uh -huh. And so it is just going around. They open the seam. This one is folded over, so the seam is open. But they pull it, they pull it pretty tight, but then you see that, uh -huh. you can see all the fiber inside here from whatever uh -huh. they were using. Many have the impression that Westerners introduced sewing to Hawaiians, yet there are pre-contact examples of Hawaiian kapa moi, sleeping kapa, and malo fragments that were stitched together using a needle made of bone, kawila wood, or bamboo. Pieces were also joined without a needle by punching holes in the kappa and drawing the thread through by hand. Thread was made of hau or kappa fibers. Though kappa making is usually thought of as women's work, the complex process also involved men. 
Actually, it was a woman's art or a woman's craft. The men, the men were very important though to it. They helped in the in the planting. They made all the tools. And if we didn't have, if the woman didn't have the tools that they made, they could not produce this fine grade of fabric that they did produce.